this is the other super finesse cut on the table. Um, as far as the knife work is concerned, uh, not not the mouth meat, but but the H bone, which is what I'm kind of liberating right now. You gotta get the mouse meat out first. Correct. Yes. Right, right. Just cut it in half. Yep. Just right down through. And the skin is, you don't get through it the first time. And then I'll ask how to get the next one. Yeah, there, I mean, it's, you can do it this way, but it's tricky because it's right now. There's so much meat here, I don't even understand it. <laughs> no, that just get, usually get turned into sausage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a random cut of meat that it's not, a, like I said, on, on almost anything that we've ever done this with, it's not a serving of meat. It's not, you wouldn't do anything dedicated with it. So we often will use it for the purpose of just, you know, feeding people the day of. Uh, but that's a nice, that's a really nice cut of meat because uh, it's tender. Um, and it can be cooked and sear hot and fast in the skillet and still be nice and tender. It doesn't require much preparation or anything like that. But then you have, you can see kind of where the, the pub is now. And of course, this is where the business the pig is. So Andy's demonstration here gives you a little bit of an idea of what's okay. happening. And, and also would help if both halves of the pig were together, and you can see where this is, you get an idea of what the pelvis is doing. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this now because I want you to do the next pig. This is the easily the trickiest part of knife work the entire day. Uh, and it's getting this H bone out of here. H it's TCH, it's not the letter H. Um, people wonder why it's called H. But it's anyway, this, this pelvis will go down a few inches. And it's underneath the socket where the ball of the femur sits. That needs to be freed out here. But it also goes all the way under the pelvis and it's connected to the spine. And the spine goes all the way back to his tail. So this guy comes out as one long, very complicated bone. It's very tiny. I'm use myself. It's not really and it's right. not something that, that is easy to do quickly, uh, at least not for us. We like to take our time. But one way to do it uh, is you don't ever bury your knife. You never like you never plunge into this. Just going to be a prosciutto, for example. You don't want it to have punctures in it. So I want to be able to know that my knife tip is within reach. It's never like just searching around down there. And also, you want to hug the contour of whatever bone you're cutting. Prosciutto is generally super thin. Serves super thin, yeah. Yes. It'll be the entire leg cured yeah. uh, and aged for a number of years. And, and then when they serve it, it's and shell it. Yeah. yeah, they shave it on the shell. Okay. Yeah. And the reason for that is not just because it's incredibly expensive and precious, but because you don't need to have a lot of it. It's been dehydrated. This is essentially what it is. The curing and the aging has broken down the meat and then concentrated all the flavors because the moisture is gone. It would be like dehydrating a strawberry. You know, it's a super intense flavor because there's no water left. It's only flavor left. It's almost like a jerky. In some kind way. of, well, yeah. jerky's dehydrated. Kind of, yeah. It's similar, yes, because a jerky, why, why does your mouth water when you eat it? You know, like, yeah. you're reconstituting the meat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I told Al yeah, to try to make sure his pork chops were square. The corner. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Yeah, doing a great job. Monty, what is that the pig the pigs weren't listening. <laughs> It's like they grow those um, square watermelons. Yes, I, see. <laughs> so I, saw, I saw that before. I saw that. <laughs> the box of them. I mean, I get why they do it. They want to stack them in their yeah. produce market, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the same. Same. The ball, and then in the inside of the ball is another uh, it's a, it's a ligament. Um, and once it's severed, it'll open up a little bit more. I don't know if you can see that. I might be able to do a little bit more. But let me, but it sits in there, 
And again, one of the reasons is just, I don't want to say it takes long because I'm choosing to take my time. Right. I actually enjoy it. This is like one of the few things yeah. I'm like, yeah, I could go in there and hammer it, but it is kind of a finesse thing and I don't have a lot of opportunities in my life to show, show off. To do this one thing slowly and, and, and aim for a, a high goal. So this is one of them. And I I also know that the, the sign, you know, because there is a, there's a way to know that you did this well. And the, the way to know that is when you're done, there's very little meat left on the bone and there's not excessive gouges in the hand. So that's what I'm aiming for in all this. So this part dives, this is the trickiest part, is back here. It dives down into the, the meat. It's really hard to get to. So I don't want to just plunge blind. So at this point, I will often finish by coming all the way around the other side. What, what remains is now, it's, it's not boneless, because you still have the femur that comes down here in the leg. Um, but the traditional prosciutto, this is where you start. Um, with this cut, and then you trim it up from here, keeping the skin on, the hock on, the dryer on. All right, one day it's going to be raw, but it will be years from now after it's fully cured and aged. Um, because it's never going to be in the oven, it's never going to be cooked, uh, we need to make sure that it's effectively cured. There are two ways to do that. One of them is to make sure that it does not have uh, places for pathogens or bacteria to hide. Any flaps of skin or, or meat like this need to be removed. We want it to be a clean, smooth surface. Bad things can't hide it. The other reason to cut it across a large plane, it's very similar to taking like a, a two by six and mitering it. You know, you go from having a five and a, five and a quarter inch face to as much as an 11 inch face just by cutting a sharp miter on it. So what you're doing is you're maximizing the surface area. You're maximizing the amount of uh, space for the salt to rest on the meat and do a curing job. Um, you can hack and trim at it, but we, what I like to do instead is tell people, imagine you had like a hot, a hot uh, uh, wire or a laser and you could just, you know, wherever you envision that taking place, that plane, that's where you want your knife to go. So look at it, kind of figure it out. Um, there's a femur here. We don't want that femur to be ex more exposed than absolutely necessary. So if I were to cut back here, for example, and I came down to the table, I wouldn't come down too sharp. I don't want to. I don't want to have a big ball hanging out there. Instead, I want to probably come down. Oh, something like this. And a nice sharp knife just makes this enjoyable. I was kind of aiming for the, the very tip of the ball, right? Yes, shoulder roast. The only thing that's really sexy about this at all is that we know it's going to be prosciutto, otherwise it's just some guy hacking at a huge piece of meat. Again, that's your point of view. <laughs> All right. You'll see me, I'm not pulling the knife out, right? Because I don't want swipes. Right? So you, I'm sawing back and forth, but the knife is never leaving the surface because I don't want a bunch of little cuts. Alright, we're getting somewhere. The fact. In fact, I'm pretty, pretty well satisfied with that. Now I'm going to do some more shaping, right? Um, I'm going to cut away at the, I don't need my big knife anymore. I'm going to cut away down here at the skin. Just cause a nice rounded finish. If this is going to be hanging, um, this has not been determined yet. It's very possible that this is going to end up hanging in a prominent place. In Al's home, he's gonna. He has. He has an uphill battle there, but I, I believe it's the good fight. Uh, I love the bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there is. 
There is something about um, you know, the, the aesthetic quality of this thing. You don't want it to be hideous. You know, if it's going to be a year or two or more before it's ever touched, um, you don't want it to be this kind of eyesore. You, you want it to be something that you're looking forward to. You want it to be something you can show off, too. <laughs> I was trying to go there, but obviously. <laughs> now that crater there. Yeah, that's, this one. That's that is around. unavoidable. That's, that's yeah. the part I said is the trickiest. Yeah. Um, and it's because when this it's sat here good. like yeep, this, um, where am I? Uh, there we go, thank you very much. Uh, this part has a, a ball that sits way down in there, and I cut it as tight to the, it's, it's almost like cartilage, can you hear that? Okay. Right? It's, I cut it as tight as I could, and it still, it still creates that crater. But even then, less is more. A situation like this, less is more. Oh, it's nice. I'm liking that. Okay. And now all the cutoffs is for sausage, basically? Oh, all the trimmings. Is sausage. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all great. Yeah, no waste here. No waste. So, um, a couple things about this. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember me uh, mentioning that there is uh, often blood shock with neck is, and the other place that there is blood is in the leg, right? And, and we tried to pump the back leg while the pig was still laying there. 25, 30 second window after the shot. In the brain, the heart and all the vitals are still functioning. While that heart is pumping, we want to get as much blood out as possible. We know that this is going to be destined for prosciutto. We know that it's going to age and hang. There's no way for us to get all the blood out of it while it's still bleeding out. But we try to help that by pumping the leg as much as possible. We also know when we're here at the table, if we were to just put salt on this, we would be setting the up for failure. We know that there's going to be blood along the channel that runs along this femur here. So one last thing we'll do is actually try to milk the blood out of the artery now while we're at the table before we go anywhere else. We just uh, just grab it by the hawk or the trotter and use my palm. And I know that I know about where it's going to be anyway, uh, so I can kind of cheat. But you, if you didn't know, and you just continued to push on it, you would eventually see where the blood is. It's, it's not going to be over here. Don't yeah, exactly. Um, not touching any meat, just the hat. <laughs> oh, okay. How do you know when you have it all? When it stops. Just, yeah. And if it was a really good bleed, and it was, like, this was a really good bleed, both pigs, um, just because we didn't capture all of it doesn't mean that it wasn't a right. sufficient bleed. Um, so we already know that there shouldn't be a bunch in here anyway. At no point has there been blood on the table today. Right. This is a terrific play. Even just watching you do that, there's nothing. Yeah, that's great. That's good to know. There you go. Stroke Dennis a little bit. We've never had this. We've never had the opportunity to hang a prosciutto or an aid a prosciutto for more than, well, ever, for any amount of time without there being a cut right here. We always cut the tendon. Mm -hmm. Always, always, always. Because we put the pig around and we have, we have to put a hook through there to hang it the other way. Yeah. So when we do that, we pack this with salt and we have to stuff salt here into this cut and we wrap it with salt in. We've never had the opportunity to have a perfectly intact trotter before. This is kind of exciting. Because what that means is that's just one more place for bacteria to possibly get into the meat. So this is, this is pretty great. This is really great. In fact, Andy and I both, when we saw that, that was our first thought. That was the main benefit. Oh. Yeah, new look at that. Was We're not going to have to cut into the prosciutto. New piece of kit you need to get now? <laughs> yeah, super clever. 